everybody, Vapy Vinny here again, and I'm back, and this isn't a review, this is a piece of vaping advocacy, um, I'm going to introduce my non-vape self to you people first, I'm, as well as a vape reviewer, I'm actually a final year nursing degree student, and I'm writing my dissertation at this moment in time, and I'm writing it on vaping and e-cigarette use. And if it is a legitimate means of smoking cessation. So I thought I would share some of my findings of going through around 10,000 clinical research papers. Now, when I say clinical research papers, they're not funded by any external organisations. They are done by clinical people, nurses, doctors, in controlled environments. Um, and the straightforward and honest and no bias whatsoever um, and no influence from outside factors in this research. Um, why have I done this? Uh, one, it's something I'm quite clearly passionate about, being a vapor myself and a vape reviewer. And advocacy is such a big thing now, and getting people off cigarettes full stop is vitally important. And some of the statistics I'm going to give you in this little presentation will show why and what we can do by getting people off cigarettes and onto vaping, e-cigarette use, um, yeah, and yes, I have got a vape in my hand, and I am going to vape while I'm doing this. Um, I have got, if anybody wanted to email me to ask for the references for the information I'm going to give in this uh, piece, my email address is vaping.vinny at gmail.com. Feel free to drop me an email and I shall see where we go and maybe give you the references and some of the papers I've found. Um, I'm going to start with one study and that was in, into comparing vaping to com, uh, com, <laughs> comparing vaping or e-cigarette use to traditional nicotine replacement therapy, the patches, the gums, the lozenges, etc. like that. Um, it's been found over a eight year long study. That's eight years long study. This was in America. Um, that vaping or e-cigarette use is 25.2% successful in converting smokers into non-smokers by using this to get their nicotine delivery instead of devices like this. Now, traditional nicotine replacement therapies are only 15.5% successful in making people non-smokers. Um, that, for me, speaks absolute volumes. And here in the UK, the National Institute for Clinical Excellence which is like the governing body of nursing and the healthcare sector that sort of tells us what we can do and what we should promote and what we should try and do to improve people's well-being in general now recommends to NHS staff that they can openly promote e-cigarette use and vaping uh, to smokers as a means of cessation via the fact that it is proven to be 95% more healthier than cigarette use for delivering nicotine. Uh, this is also backed back by Public Health England, but they have to follow the, the National Institute of Clinical Excellence guidelines anyway. Um, so yeah, and to take that a step further, um, there was a, an American study over a 10 year period that gathered data on vapors, life expectancies, and how things have changed and how their health had changed. Um, if every smoker in America stopped smoking, 
over a 10 year period for 10 years in length, there would be 20.8 million fewer life years lost through smoke, smoking generated illnesses and deaths. 20.8 million life years less lost. And that roughly equates to 1.6 million premature deaths prevented if smokers changed to vaping or e-cigarette use. <laughs> it's, that, that's mind-blowing. That's just over 10 years. That's 1.6 million premature deaths of smokers prevented. Just over 10 years. Wow. And that is, again, a clinical research paper that's done that. Uh, yeah, and uh, that's mind blowing, really. Let's be honest, that's completely mind blowing. 28.8 million life years preserved if every smoker in America switched to vaping. Um, some of the other research I've looked into uh, revolves around flavors. Now, this is big in America at the minute where the FDA clamping down and um, issuing flavour bans and various states issuing flavour bans. Now what one clinical research paper looked into was the fact that as a lot of people know around vaping, the flavours of juices is completely subjective. Everyone tastes everything differently. But the FDA and um, this research paper looked into it and, and, and changed labelings and names of juices just see things objectively with flavours and not subjectively because every vapour, like I've just said, tastes things differently. So the big issue with the flavour bands um, and things like that that are coming in is it's been looked at blinkered, this report says. Um, basically the FDA don't want to be banning flavours because every vapour stops with things. I mean people want to get away from tobacco tastes from smoking tastes that is the general findings of this particular paper so people do f f vape fruity flavors cakey flavors things like that and uh, yeah the fda is completely blinkered this paper sets out that they're looking at it completely objectively and not subjectively like we all know um, this paper recommends that there should be changing how we describe flavours of juices and the images on the bottles and things like that, rather than banning flavours completely. So obviously you ban flavours and you're left with menthol and tobacco flavour. I'd say 80% of vapors don't want to vapor tobacco flavour. Yeah. And another paper, which I didn't, I, I, I read into it and studied around it, but it wasn't part of my dissertation, was on young vapors, teen vapors, vapors that probably shouldn't be vaping and are not of legal age to vape. Now, the FDA and various other organizations around the globe, let's be honest, it's not just in America, state that vaping is a gateway to smoking. Now, I think I found about 70 papers that contradicted this completely, absolutely contradicted it completely, and stated that young vapors, underage vapors, were actually already underage smokers. So these underage smokers have switched and bought a vape somehow illegally, maybe their parents have, or yeah, what, they've obtained one by some means. That 70 research papers against five stated that these pe these young people uh, were previously underage smokers. That's what they're not taking into consideration with that side. And I've always said, and I'll stand by what I've said, if either of my two young sons started, if I caught one of them smoking, I'd get him a vape. 
I, I, I'm breaking the law, but they're breaking the law already by smoking anyway. I'd rather them vaped than did that. Purely and simply because it's not as harmful. And that is a proven fact. Absolutely proven fact. Um, another sort of thing with vaping and the, the red top newspapers in this country, the gossip papers, love to roll out, is popcorn long. Uh, which is caused by an ingredient that was in a lot of e-cigarette juices, liquids, these kind of things. Um, uh, it's an ingredient called disetol. Now, disetol hasn't been in vape liquids now for well over a year. Uh, but even when it was, a standard cigarette held over a hundred times the amount as one large bottle of vape liquid. <laughs> what does that tell you? It's scaremongering, it's people trying to influence people not into vaping, which we can all put two and two together and work out who is putting that sort of false news, if you want. But quote Donald Trump, false news, fake news. It's fake news. All these clinical research papers, I think in, in all of history, now the whole popcorn one thing came from uh, factories in America that used to make popcorn. And one person, one person got diagnosed with having popcorn, which is like little polyps within the lungs, which means your lungs don't function as efficiently. Um, can be quite serious. It's a bit like a COPD kind of uh, issue. But one person in the entire recording of popcorn lung incidents, if you like, illnesses, has died. Cancer. Millions and millions a year. Absolutely millions. Now, if all that isn't enough to try and convince you into switching to an e-cigarette or a vape if all that's not enough to make you consider a switch of vaping then maybe some facts on some money and some statistics on the costs may help you now in the uk um vape, uh, vaping smoking costs society that's all of us in the uk all taxpayers everybody within the uk 30.1 million a year. Now that's in cleaning up cigarette butts. That's looking after people with cancer related illnesses caused by smoking. The COPDs, the prescriptions for it, everything like that. All rolled into that is 30.1 million a year. Wow. Imagine what we could do with that amount of money. Just imagine. Now on top of that. That actually costs the NHS alone 4.5 million in treating people with health related illnesses to smoking. 4.5 million a year, as well as that, it's huge numbers. Now, the game's to you personally, but switching to e cigarette or vaping. Generally, the average vapor who would have smoked one pack of cigarettes a day saves around three thousand pounds a year. Let that sink in, folks. Three thousand pounds a year saving. On top of all the health benefits, living longer, you'll have more money to enjoy your life. I hope if you've watched this, you will share this and share it wherever you'd like. In I've given my email address at the start. It's vaping.vinny at gmail.com. I will also be publishing this on my Facebook page, Vaping Vinny. Please, if you watch this, go find my page. You don't have to like it. You don't have to follow me. Just share this video to your own walls, to your own vape groups. We need to get this word out there to smokers and get them converted from smoking to e-cigarette vaping use. That's what this is all about, folks. If you could do that for me, I'd be very grateful. Take care of yourselves. Goodbye. God bless. And respect to all. And let's vape on, people. Vape on.